What's going on everybody, it's Charles. In this video, we're gonna be upgrading the pendulum mount on the Mark 8 Golf R. The pendulum mount, or dog bone mount as we more often call it, is a mount that goes from the subframe to the transmission on our cars. This has been a very similar mount for many, many generations. Upgrading the pendulum mount is gonna do a couple of things for you. One, it'll reduce wheel hop on hard acceleration. Two, it's really gonna do a good job of limiting the amount of engine movement, which really does improve the shift feel of the car. If you have a manual transmission, if you have a DSG, it actually does help too. We're also on our path of testing to see what Mark 7 stuff fits on the Mark 8. There is a couple of different approaches to replacing or upgrading the pendulum mount. One is going to be installing inserts only into the bushing inside the subframe. This will consist of two separate pieces, a lower insert and an upper insert. And while you might technically be able to do the lower insert only, installing both the upper and the lower is ideal. With just that lower insert installed, as you can see here, it can play an uneven load on the bushing and actually damage that upper bushing. If you're looking for more than that, that's when we look at installing the billet new pendulum mount altogether, which does have the spherical bearing inside of it. That will replace this whole arm. This one here has a rubber bushing in it that allows more engine movement. Now, because this is not a race car, we still want some movement in this piece right here. All that vibration from the engine would be sent up in the car and make it pretty much miserable to drive. You can see how much movement we have here, the majority of it coming from this bushing in the subframe. Now, before you just order some parts, you wanna make sure that you get the right stuff. There's a couple of different inserts and a couple of different pendulum mounts that are out there. 034's website's really good and really descriptive about what you need to look at, so make sure you check and get the right deal. Something I'm hyper aware of in a vehicle is NVH, which stands for noise, vibration, and harshness. Anytime we stiffen up anything in our powertrain, we have the potential to increase NVH inside the car, which can really impact your driving experience. So I'm gonna start with just the insert. Let's go ahead and get our original dog bone mount out first. This is pretty straightforward, just a couple of bolts. I always start with the one in the bushing and then go to loosen the one inside the bushing. It's gonna tweak all this up and probably cause undue stress on our bushing. And if you've never replaced one of these bushings, it's not fun. Loosen these, then we can take them the rest of the way out. Whether you're doing the whole pendulum mount or just the insert, really, the job is pretty much the same. Now you might get a little engine movement when these bolts come out, but it won't be much. You do not need to support the engine at all when taking these on and off. Bolts out, we can get our original mount out. Comes out nice and easy. Now here's our top side mount, and it kind of goes in the car just like this. 034 calls for going from the top down. If you're crafty and patient, you might be able to go from the bottom up with this one. This is actually two separate bushings. We need to take our sway bar mounts where it mounts to the subframe loose. So that's two 13 millimeter bolts here and two on this side. Now, another good part about all this is like, it doesn't affect your vehicle alignment or your engine mount alignment. All that stuff should fall pretty much right into place exactly where it should be. Now, we'll take our insert. It goes in the car like this. This one's a little trickier to get in. You might need some silicone spray or something, a little bit of grease to uh, lubricate that up. So if you're careful, you can take a pry bar through the opening and just bump it the rest of the way down. Should sit pretty much flush at the top there. Next, we gotta get our sway bar mounted back up. It probably moved a bit, so you might need to do one of two things. Either grab a prize bar and kinda massage her back into place. If that doesn't work, you can take the end links off and that'll free that whole thing up quite a bit. Depends on how far it moved. All right, after messing around with the sway bar for a few minutes, I think I'm just gonna take the end links off. And that will make life easier. Now the bar has no tension on it at all. Much easier to try and get one nut lined up than four bolts all at the same time. See how easy that was? And you were out here messing with it like a dum-dum, Charles. Now we can go ahead and put our sway bar back in the end links, which is generally super easy, only of mild inconvenience. Once that upper mount is in, you either install your 034 upgrade, or if you're just doing inserts, go back with your stock mount. Pretty much the same process either way. I'm gonna continue on showing with the upgraded 034 mount because that's what we're installing. 
wiggle that guy in there. Now we are also going to use our insert as well. And we got some new hardware. I like to install the big bolt in the subframe first, because that seems to always be the hardest one to line up. Tap, tap, insert in, bolt in. Look at that, went right in that time. Snug this guy down. You don't need to have it tight, just get it started. Other two bolts. You have two lengths, a long boy and a short boy. Short boy goes up front, long boy goes in the back. Now this mount also moves side to side, so you might need to have a side to side movement too. I always start these by hand every time. So if you cross thread that, you get to make a repair in the transmission. Ain't nobody got time for that. Go ahead and snug your bolts up. If you encounter resistance in these bolts, stop. Don't go to town on these babies. I've seen guys have to make repairs here. It sucks. Snug, snug. Come back and torque them in a minute. I just kind of want to get an idea of the movement. I think we're gonna have excessive stiffness. Real quick, jumping in here mid video, during the editing process, we actually noticed something really cool. It's pretty clear that there's not nearly as much movement with the 034 mount as there was with the factory one. We saw that no problem, but what we didn't see is look at the subframe actually flexing as I'm prying against it. This really does show you how much stiffer this upgraded pendulum mount is over the factory one. Okay, now I gotta torque these guys. Repair manual calls for torquing these two first, then th this one, then going back and doing your plus 90 degrees. These first two up in the front to the transmission, 50 Newton meters. Buzz, buzz, 50. 130 Newton meters, that is if you're using new hardware, keep in mind. Woo! So we're gonna do plus 90, so we'll mark our bolts. Unless you like the torque angle way, that way is good too. Uh, this one's gonna be a little trickier, but... All right, let's do our 90 degrees. We got one. We got two. Yeah, including me not being strong enough. Ugh. Goodness gracious. Ugh. Okay, next up, we gotta go drive it. We got the GoPro mounted under, so hopefully you'll be able to see a direct comparison between the factory setup and this new 034 setup. My guess, you're probably not gonna see the full gain of this kind of mod until you get into some pretty aggressive driving. Okay, after putting a handful of miles on the car with some normal stop and go, a little more aggressive stop and go, and everything was fine until Eli said, I can't believe that, the GoPro is still on there instantly. Well, show them, show them what it looked like. So overall, it kind of levels up the stiffness of everything in the car. Turning, shifting, braking, all that stuff just feels stiffer, which is in a lot of ways a good thing. Now, it does introduce a bit of feedback from the engine into the cabin, especially on like low speed turning seem to be when you really experience that the most. How do you make the decision between just doing the insert or doing the whole entire arm? Well, if you just want a bit of an improvement, right? Everything to be a little bit better, just do the, the insert. I think most of us are gonna be just fine with that. If you're really looking to level up, that's probably when you'd wanna go with the whole entire arm with the top side, spacer, insert, the bottom insert, and that really nice billet piece. The 1034 hooked us up with is actually for Mark 7, bolted right up to the Mark 8, no problem. With that, we're gonna wrap it up. I'll put links to everything we use down in the description. More awesome 034 Motorsports stuff coming soon. Should be fun. With that, I'm out. Have an awesome day. And hopefully this guy stops with his little dinky thing hanging off of his uh, van. Have an awesome day. I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.